This will be a nice challenge for those of you who like to see formulas in action. So in this exercise, we're going to perform a complex lookup function. Basically, I have some clients here and they have presence in different countries and I've done some deals with them at different dates. I want to fill this table where I'm going to put the countries where each client is present. So for example, client one is present in the three countries, Japan, France, and Colombia, whereas client two is only present in Japan and in France. So how to do this? Well, we're going to use something called index and aggregate function with some other functions. We're going to do it step by step because it's not easy. In a previous lesson, I've done a similar exercise. However, what we had there is a unique client. So the client will be only in one place in the table and we used index and some product. So let's start. First of all, I'm going to hard code and then we're going to start developing our formula step by step. So if I go to client one, I'm just going to do equal index, open parenthesis. My array is where we have the answer. So this is my array, the row number, I only have one row, so that would be one. And the column number is where I have to work. Here I have them in the three countries. So I'm just going to select one. I'm going to select the third column number. So that would be three. I close the parentheses. I get Colombia. If I just copy paste this with control C escape, I double click here. I paste it, double click here, paste it. And then here change this to two and change this to one. I'm going to get the answer. The problem is that this is hard coded and I don't want anything hard coded. So I need to work to get the right column. The first thing we're going to do is write this equal. Then we're going to do the whole array that I have equal client one. So if you see here, I'm going to get a big array where I have true wherever I have a match. So here, for example, the first cell in my array is client one. I'm going to get a true because it matches. The second one is blank, so it doesn't match client one. It's going to be false. The third one is false. If we go to the second line, I'm going to get a true in the middle because this is where my client one is matching. To make it a bit simpler for you, I'm just going to select the first three rows so you can see it. And then we can drag the whole thing down. That's not a problem. So here you can see my true values. If you don't see this on your Excel, it means you have an old version of Excel. So what you could do is just select the formula here and do F9. Then you can see all your true and false. But for the remainder of this video, what I'm going to do is show you this in a matrix format so you can understand it better. So this is one thing I want to do. The next thing I want to do is put some parentheses around the formula and I want to transform this to ones and zero. So I'm just going to do minus minus, which means I'm multiplying by minus one and multiplying by minus one. And if I do enter every place, I have a match, which is a true. I'm going to get a one and every place I don't have a match. I'm going to get a zero. So that's cool. Now, if I want to convert this one to column one, this one here to column two, and this one here to column three, I need to multiply this by something, right? You can use the column formula. So if I write here column, I open the parentheses and I select those three countries and I close the parentheses. I'm going to get two, three, four. Why two, three, four? because Japan is in column B, which is the second column in my sheet. So if I do minus one, I'm going to get one, two, three. And again, for those of you who cannot see this, you just select the formula and press F9. Once you want to come back to your Excel sheet, just press escape. So now I have this formula. I'm just going to take it. Control C escape. I will go here. And I will multiply by this. So I'm going to open the parentheses, paste what I have, close the parentheses. And since now I'm multiplying, 
I don't need those two minuses. We get what? We get one for the first column, two for the second column, and three for the third column. So this is where I have a match. Let's delete this formula. We don't need it. We're going to keep this one. To get the indices, what I could do is use a formula called large. So what does this large formula do? Let's try it out, equal large, and then we select an array. Let's assume we're selecting this array, comma. It will tell me what is the largest number that you want. You want the first largest, so the highest one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, what do you want? So if I type here one, I'm going to get three. If I change this to two, I'm going to get the second largest number in this array, which is two. Three is the third largest number in this array. So let's use this here. We can do large and then do comma one. So here we get our three. So I can use this large formula in each of the cells to get the top number, the second number, and the third number, which are the numbers, if you see here, we had three, here we had two for the column, and here we had one. So I can use this. However, there are a couple of problems. The first problem is, in older versions of Excel, large cannot take arrays, and it will bug. So I'm going to show you a fix for that. Otherwise, you can just use the formula that I have here. The second problem I have is that we hard-coded one. If we want the second one, we have to hard-code it. So we need to fix this one. So for the hard-coding, let's start with this. What we could do is the following. We could use columns. So be careful. Columns is way different than column. Columns, it counts the number of columns in a range. So if I click on country one, so that's G3, and I do column G3, so that's one column. This is the first one, right? Let's do F4 to fix this. And this one, since I'm going to drag it this way, what do I want to do? I want to fix the three, but I don't want to fix the G because I might drag the formula down, right? So I'm just going to fix also those. and fix this range and then for the F so I'm just gonna do a dollar sign before the F now we can drag the formula and you're gonna see that I get the 3 and the 2 as I said the second problem is that I need to change this large to something that takes an array and what I could do is use the aggregate function so instead of large we're gonna use aggregate here so we open the brackets and then first we have the function number. The function number, if you type something here, you will see there are a lot of function. Large is number 14. So it's 14, comma. The second thing is what I want to ignore. So this is a very powerful feature of aggregate, but here I don't want to ignore anything. So I'm gonna select this four and then comma. So then we have our array, which is this, what we had. Then we have our K which is the highest number, the second highest, the third highest. So now I'm good, enter. I can just drag this to show you that we have the same result. So this is my aggregate function. I can take this aggregate function by doing control C, escape. I will go to Colombia and replace this three. So now we replace it, enter. So now we get the same result for Colombia. I need to use F4 again for some of the values here because we want the same kind of range and we're going to drag the formula. So now if we do this, we're going to get a good formula that is dynamic. Last thing I need to change is this range. Now I can select the whole range since you understood the concept and I can drag it. So that's good. The problem will come when you have client 2, for example. Client 2 is only present in Japan and France, but not in Colombia. So if I drag this formula, 
I get France, that's good for me. I get Japan, that's good for me. But here I'm gonna have a problem because that should be a blank. In older version of Excel, you're gonna have an error. In the new version, you're gonna have an array. Why? Because here I couldn't find anything. So it returned zero. I'm gonna show you this in the formula bar. So if we go evaluate formula and I start evaluating all these big things, then at the end, I didn't find anything, I got a zero. But zero for index means take everything. So when I do it, I will get Japan, France, and Colombia. So how can I fix this? Basically, the best way to save on computation also is to have an if statement at the beginning that will check a condition and then you can run the whole formula whether you're gonna find a match. So what can I do here? I can have a helper column here with a count if. So let's try it. First of all, we're gonna do count if. I want to know how many matches I'm gonna get. So I want to know in each column whether I have client one. So what is my range? My range is this. Let's just fix it again with F4. And what is my criteria? My criteria is this F4 here, the cell this time, which is the client one. So we're just gonna do this and then do enter and we get one. The problem will come if we get client one again here. So here you're gonna get two. And I want to keep it at one maximum per column. So what I could do is do a minimum formula in front of it, have the count if, and then one. So if I don't find anything, my count if will return zero and zero versus one, the minimum is zero. If my count if finds 10 matches, for example, I'll have 10 versus one and I'll get one. So now I'm putting the value at zero or one. So this is for one column. I can replicate the same for the second column and the third column. So let's just copy paste it and make some changes. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. Now we have a range here. This range we need to change. We need to put the second column. So that's my second column, F4. And then here I have my third column. And I'm going to do F4. So now here you have three. Let's just drag it down. Two for client two, client three only one, and so on. So I can change my formula. I can do an if now. If, what can I check? I want to check whether my column here is smaller or equal than this. Then I want to run the formula. Otherwise, I want to stop. So let's write it and then let's understand it with some examples. So I'm going to do the same thing I had here. This is the number of columns. We're going to put it here. Smaller or equal than this, comma. At the end of the formula, we have another comma and we put blank. Here, I have just to fix it. So when I move, I won't have a problem with the column. And if I just drag it, you have the same result. But on the second line, you can see that the third country where I had the problem disappears. And let's just drag it till the bottom. And you can see that I get the desired result. So what happened? In a case like this one, where I had only one instance of client three, what will happen for the first country I'm gonna get for columns G3 to G3, it's one column, right? So it will be one is smaller or equal than one here. So it's gonna execute the formula. For the second one, I'm gonna have G3 to H3. So those are two columns. Two is not smaller or equal than one. So then it will not execute the formula and I'm gonna get a blank and so on. In this case, because I have three matches, so I have three here. Here, the first one will be a one from G3 to G3 column. As we remembered, column is just the count of columns. So here I have one. So one is smaller or equal than three, it will execute. 
for country 2 I'm gonna have g3 to h3 those are two columns less or equal than 3 execute it and the third one will be 3 less or equal than 3 execute it so this is how you can use multiple formulas to do complex lookups if this is very hard for you let me know in the comment section so I can guide you and also have a look at the other lessons on index and match index and some product in the same playlist this way you're going to be able to build your knowledge step by step and as usual if you find this video useful I would love to have a like from you and please subscribe to the channel to help me make more content like this one